in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, Gene TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing aftershows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey, what's up? What's up? You at home. I'm Brandon London at Cultured Athlete on your social media feeds. Welcome to the football after show here at After Buzz TV. Make sure you follow us at After Buzz TV. I know you're looking at me like, come on, B London. You're supposed to start about 35 minutes ago. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. The LA traffic is real. It's real out here on these streets. So we're going to cut this. This is what we're going to do. We're going to cut um, this show down because it is, there's a show after me. I'm going to do an interview with someone and then I'm also going to announce that we're going to push the show back next week. We'll, we'll either push it up to Tuesdays at 5 p.m. or we'll push it up to Thursdays at 5 p.m. just so we can get some consistency going on because I come from being on set or in class. Got to run up to 405. Don't worry about it. No excuses. So let's get straight into this episode or this show. Um, I have on the line with me a very good friend of mine. Uh, used to be one of my coaches up in the CFL. He's now the player personnel coordinator for the Ottawa Red, Bla Red Blacks. I purposely messed up your name, Ottawa, just because I'm a Montreal Alouette purposely messed up your name. No, I'm just joking around. I got JM, uh, well, we call him JM. I've got John Mark Edme on the line. JM, what's up, buddy? Hello, JM, can you hear me? JM? We're going to get him back on the line. Okay, JM, we're going to get him back on the line. Something must have happened on the line. But a lot of things going on up north, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of things going on up north. We're going to focus strictly on the CFL today because we're not going to have enough time to get to the NFL. I'll just double it up on the NFL next week because there's a lot going on in the NFL as well with free agency and such. But we're going to stick to the CFL. The combine just ended, and that's something that I really want to talk to JM about. Hello? JM, can you hear me? Yeah. What's up, JM? You man, you missed you missed your intro, man. You missed your intro, bro. I had a really nice intro for you. Oh man, I missed it, man. I, I, yeah, the line was cut off, but I'm glad I'm back on. Yeah. So what's going on up there, man? Where Where are you at? Are you uh, in Toronto or are you back in Ottawa? Yes, I'm back in I'm back in Ottawa. I'm currently at the office, and uh, yes, we just had the combine last week, and uh, now we're back. Uh, you know, we're watching film hard, and uh, we uh, keep it going. You said you're keeping it going, and I like how you threw in that you're in the office right now. Hashtag always working. Hashtag always <laughs> grinding. I like it. And you said uh, you mentioned that you were in uh, Toronto for the Combine. Can you kind of tell us what that entire experience is like for a scout? Yes. You know, uh, the Combine is, is always a good experience for uh, not really to, to watch the kids uh, running drills, but it's really to know them uh on the personal level, you know, um, yeah. you know, ask them questions, and you know, they they go through a thorough uh, interview uh, process uh, yeah. with us, and, and you know, we want to make sure that you know uh, the prospects uh, fit the culture that we have here in, in Ottawa. So, when you see a guy, you like the way he runs. Uh, you, let's say he's a receiver. You like the way he runs. You like the way he catches. Uh, you're impressed with his interviews and such. What's the process after that? Do you you guys meet together and talk about who you want and you go off of needs, or is it just something where it could be, wow, this this kid wowed us. We need a DB. We're taking the receiver. Yes, you, you know what, you know what. I think I think here, you know, uh, Marcel Jardin, general manager, you know, really established a really good, uh, you know, scouting uh, uh, philosophy. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I really think that um, you know the CFL draft is is a bit different than, than the NFL draft. You know, where you know we're drafting, you know, Canadian-born uh, players, and mm -hmm. and what we're trying to do is 
you know, we really try to create some sort of depth and, and try to see who can improve us on certain spots. And, you know, a lot of those guys will be a special team guys or, or, you know, they'll play like a specific role, um, you know, within, you know, either the offense or, or uh, defense. But, but I really think once we make a selection, uh, you know, it's really a collective uh, effort in terms of, you know, uh, you know, we included the film, the interview uh, process, uh, the medical uh, report, you know, all those things come into effect for us to make a, a selection. But, um, but yeah, you know, we're trying to put everything to, uh, together and, you know, we're trying to see, you know, what's the best fit for, for us because, um, because, you know, the main deal is for us to get uh, a quality person in the building that's the that's the number one thing so that's your number one goal getting uh quality into the building now let's talk about the cfl draft in past years has some of the picks the top picks in the cfl draft turned out to be what teams wanted and what teams thought that kid was going to be after the shirt and shorts workout oh yeah you know you know what i really think the you know the short the the, the, the short and short workout. It's 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 really one aspect. But the, the, we we base uh, our selection. No, everything is a selection on what's on the film. Yeah. You know, we really grind on the film, like the game tapes. Uh, you know, uh, we don't really watch much uh, highlights. And, and you know what? Even you know the combine is it's all film. And once we get back to the office, we don't really watch that. We go back in the film and and you know we 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 try to watch uh, the four quarters of all the games. And you know, we want to know, you know, uh, how, how does he play on the first quarter, the second, the third, and the fourth? And um, that's really the, the film work, uh, the game film work is really where like the, the ground work is, is done. And I really think all the other CFL teams uh, really based uh, their choices on, on, on the game film. So the game film is very important, obviously. The oh, shirts yeah. and mm-hmm. short workout is, you know, like you said, you, you engage, you gauge you know, if mm-hmm. the player can run and such. Now, how do you gauge if a player who, let's say, played at Laval or played at, uh, what's it, Mc- McMaster's, how can mm-hmm. you gauge if that player can come in to your organization the next year and go up against someone who may have played at the University of Miami or you're going up against a veteran like G. Roy Simon or, you know, a guy like um, – what Chris Getzlaff is on this show. How can you gauge if that kid is actually ready to go and play professional football after leaving the CIS? Mm-hmm. You know, that's a great uh, question. I know, JM. Um, I ask great questions, man. I'm, I'm, I'm Hollywood, man. That's what I do, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, uh, you know. One thing about uh, scouting, uh, it's always a, a projection. You know, um, you know. Once we watch the uh, the film and you put your 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 grade uh, um, on that uh, report of the specific uh, player, you know, you know, we go uh, um, around the room and and you know, there's always uh, debates and all that. But but as a scouting staff, we always end up with a, a final grade, and 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 and, and, and that final the, the final grade always uh, dictates where where the player uh, is going to fit. And, 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 you know, and, and the, the top guys, we, we always feel that they can come in and compete with the current guys. And, and, you know, uh, one thing about the CIS, it, it's uh, the level of football, it's, it's really, uh, increased. Like, yeah. you talk about Laval, yeah. the Master. You know, a lot of those kids were, you know, could be uh, good enough to play, like, you know, either Division Two or uh, Wonder Bully Ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so throughout the years, the coaches at that level uh, really did a good job with uh, going to clinics, and, and the level of football really got better. And, and the training, you know, a lot, of, a lot of those schools now, they, got, they have strength conditioning uh, coaches. So now those kids are more ready to play than you know, like they were a couple of years ago. These guys are getting CFL ready thanks to the new strength and conditioning programs that the CIS is implementing in their programs. Now, without giving, without giving top secret, secret red black information, who would you say name three guys who impressed you at the combine? You know what? Um, I, I really think the. The, the one guy who really wowed everybody at the combine, you know, to be honest with you, is uh, Brian Jones from okay. Acadia. You know, he's a big, tall uh, re- receiver, like, you know, 6'4", 235 pounds. Like, he really looks like a big tight end, and, and yeah. he really 
did a good job setting up his routes, catching the football. You know, he has long arms and he can run, and he's really physical at, at the point of attack. And he's a he's a strong kid. Uh, he benched uh, 24 reps. You know, I really think uh, this kid uh, really wowed everybody. And uh, I think you know whoever gets him, you know, are really going to create some mismatches uh, against uh, uh, defenses because he he big enough to play tight end. Big enough to be, to be in the backfield as a fullback and, and be uh, to play one of those slots or wide out uh, spots and uh, within the receiving core. Who, so there's one guy that really uh, impressed everybody. Who who would you compare him to? What Canadian player would you compare him to that's in the CFL right now? You know, um, you know, uh, right now he, he's like. Um, to be honest with you, he he reminds me of a, a bigger version of. And slightly faster than uh, Fantoos. You Ooh, know, okay. Fantoos is a big, okay. a big star receiver, but but this kid, this kid is strong enough to to block and you know play uh, uh, in the box. And and I really think like you know he's he's like uh, you know he the way he ran he reminds me of a Fantoos who was capable to block. Now that's a big so, compliment, uh, JM. Like Fantoos, yeah. when he was a writer, he had uh, his own cereal, Fantoos flakes. I remember yes, seeing yes, that when yes, we went out there yes, to play them. So yes, Fantuz gets yes, busy. Yeah, you, you know what? You know what? Let me tell you this. You know, uh, this kid, this kid did not get you know, the the stat that uh, you know Fantu, He didn't get the stat that Fantuz got in college. But but yeah. his frame, when you look at him, you know he's a big, tall, long guy with with big arms, long arms, and and he can run and 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 you know and, and there's not many. You know, uh, 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 tight ends really in the CFL like like true uh, tight ends, but but this kid really wow everybody. You know, wow. he really impressed everybody, and, and I really think he's gonna have a, a great CFL career. And I and I really think that the team is gonna get him. You know, he's gonna he's gonna do some great things. So he's obviously gonna do great things on the offensive side of the ball. Now, what defensive guy really stood out uh, in your mind at the C- at CFL Combine? You know, you know, there was uh, uh, numerous uh, guys, you know, and and I think you know uh, one guy, you know, that that, that jumped to um, many scouts and coaches was uh, the kid from um, Sam Houston, Ke- Kevin Jackson, okay. uh, linebacker. You know, um, you know, he's a kid from the Toronto, Toronto area who played his football in the U.S. and uh, you know, I think he showed some good feet, and you know, he's a uh, Physical, you know, he, he moved around uh, pretty well, and you know, there, there's also a couple of uh, there's also the kid from uh, Laval, uh, Shane Gauthier, another linebacker who um, who ran uh, pretty uh, decent, and he has good uh, movement skills. And I think those, you know, those two guys will will have a role in the CFL and contribute on special teams uh, right away. Just on special teams, can you see them uh, getting into a? Uh, a starting role, kind of like Shea Emery, who was a ratio breaker, being a Canadian middle starting middle linebacker and such. Yeah, you know, I, I think I think those guys, the, 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 the both will have a learning curve, and, yeah. and okay. you know, and I think down the road, you know, they, they might be uh, uh, that guy, but but I really think they're gonna have an immediate impact on, on teams, and and you know, maybe down the road they can fall into that role. All right, so they'll they'll develop they'll develop. Now, one thing I wanted to know um, personally was, how do you guys develop or or how do you guys um, what's what's the word evaluate or how do you guys evaluate a Canadian born athlete who played their college football in the United States? And the first name that comes to my head is Trent Corney, who played at the University of Virginia for my father. And, you know, mm-hmm. I got to watch him play at Virginia and such. How do you guys evaluate them and determine if you're going to draft them or not? Because he's trying to go to the NFL first. So what's the process with that? Yes, okay, the process is this. is Any, any player, um, you know, either uh, played in Canada or, or in the U.S. in the NCAA, anytime the NFL stock uh, goes up, you know, the, the CFL stock goes down because – because you don't want to draft a kid that, that that will not be on your team yeah. uh, right away, you know. Mm-hmm. Because uh, sometimes, for example, a player X, you know, he's uh, you know he had a strong senior season at uh, at Virginia, for example, and and 
and you know he's gonna get and then we the buzz is that he's gonna get even drafted or signed as an the free agent. Yeah. So you know so you know his draft stock goes down. But in terms of the evaluation pr- process, and I know us here in Ottawa, you know we have uh, scouts uh, in the U.S. Uh, area scouts that uh, that go goes all around the school. They they go scout every Canadian player who plays at a at a, at a, at a U.S. school. Really? So, uh, so, 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 so that way, you know, we can get the intel on those kids, and also they can go there and watch film. And also, every school uh, s- uh, send uh, their their film here at the office, so so we have access uh, to their film as well. But uh, the main thing is that us, we have uh, uh, two scouts in the U.S. that work uh, full time for us, and and their job are just like area scouts in the NFL, and they go all, all over schools and. and Man, you guys are constantly hunting for talent, constantly looking for that next, that next ratio breaker. Now I wanted to uh, talk about. Well, this is Ottawa's new digs for you, new location for you. You uh, come over from the Montreal Alouettes. We both have moved on from from Montreal. You obviously the big things. Uh, me, I'm just here in LA chilling. You know me. Um, can you say with? Tressman being gone and you know all the changes that are being made in Montreal. Can you say Ottawa is the new the new beast of the East? You know what? Uh, look, one thing I can say is this. You know, I think uh, Ottawa. Uh, you know, when 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 the ownership decided to hire Marcel Desjardins yeah. uh, as their general manager, I really knew that they, they got uh, in my mind. You know, um, you know the best guy. You know, and. and in the business, you know, he, I really, you know, I wasn't worried about the, this expression team, you know, g- growing to be what they are uh, right now. Yeah. And, and I really think he established a really great uh, culture here. And, and I, th- I think this is why, you know, uh, Ottawa kind of became, it, 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 I think, is the, the place to be uh, in the CFL, you know, as a player, as a coach, and also as a, as a scout. You know, and um, you know, in terms of Montreal, you know what? I, I think I think um, every franchise goes through uh, uh, up and down. Yeah. And and, and you know, Mark, uh, you know, uh, was a loss, and but we we I think we knew everybody knew that Mark's dream uh, was to be in the NFL. To, it was to be an NFL coach, and he was able to uh, you know realize that. But I really feel the Montreal has the you know, the right pieces. They, they they got the right people to get. To get the uh, you know, to get the franchise back on track, they have a great owner, they have Jim Pop, and and I really think they'll they'll, they'll do their best to get the, the team back on track, and and I think this year it's a big year for everybody, you know, not only for Montreal but for us, Toronto and uh, Hamilton, everybody else. It's going to be a huge year, and uh, it's going to be an exciting season in CFL. Man, JM, you're so politically correct, man. I tried to get some dirt just now. You don't want to give me dirt. You don't want to give me sound bits. Man, you could have been like, man, we're going to go over there. We're going to beat them. That's what I was looking for. But you know what? I see. I see. You're a professional, man. You're a true professional. So what's next for you? You guys are done with the CFL draft. Uh, what's what's the next process for coaches, players, scouts? What what, what are you guys doing now? Okay. Uh, uh, right now, you know, the, the bulk of the work is, is uh, the CFL draft, and we um, – you know, we have uh, a couple of uh, tryouts coming up. Uh, you know, we have uh, a tryout on April 9th. Uh, we're going to be in Austin, Texas. Uh, and the next day on the 10th, we'll be in Vegas. You know, we want to make sure we don't miss uh, uh, anybody uh, on the street. And, you know, we have a mini camp, our OTAs, uh, at the end of, of April for a c- couple of days. You know, we have the draft on, on, on May 10th. No. And the end of May, we it's gonna be a training camp. Right back so, at uh, it. It's around the corner, brother. When you all when you all have your uh, camp or your tryout in Vegas, I mean, if you guys need me to come help evaluate, you know, I'm a, I, I got a pretty good eye for talent. Now, you know, if you guys want want me to come up and hang out. Yeah, you know, hey, Brandon, you know, if you want to come and ha- help us out, evaluate, you know, you you you're more than. Uh, Welcome, and then uh, well, it's gonna be at uh, UNLV uh, practice field. Okay. And, uh, you know, you know, we're expecting uh, some great talent there, and then, uh, you know, we're uh, looking to uh, get better, and we're we're trying to see, uh, you know, who can uh, help us. In your eyes, speaking as you're not you're not speaking as a, a member of the Ottawa Red Blacks. 
in your eyes, what two, what teams are making big moves in free agency this offseason? Because there's been a lot of shifts. So who do you think made some power moves this offseason and got better? You know, I really think uh, Winnipeg, you know, you know, uh, Winnipeg really uh, spent money, <laughs> made uh, a lot of moves. You know, they added uh, a lot of key uh, free agents and, you know, you know, they're, they're, the season didn't go the way they uh, wanted, but, uh, you know, they, they spent uh, a lot of money on, on guys and, and, you know, and then uh, this should be uh, better, you know. Uh, they got... Uh, Dressler, and then uh, you know, I really think he's an uh, an impact uh, receiver, and um, you know, so 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 they, they made some some big moves, and they spent a lot of money, and but you know, it's always expected and, and stuff. And yeah. free agency, uh, there's always one team who who spends more than than uh, other teams, and but uh, yeah, it's really going to be exciting. Uh, I can't wait for the season to come on. Last question, JM. What expectations? <laughs> Obviously, being around the Ottawa locker rooms and the coaches now, what's the environment like there? What's the, the like the change of environment? What's different from being there than in Montreal? Um, you know what? You know what? Like here, um, you know, I, I really feel that uh, it's it's. Uh, how can I say this? You know, when I, when I first started uh, in January, the the, the main uh, the difference is that. Uh, you know, everybody is smiling. You know, last year they, they went to the Grey Cup. Yeah. Unfortunately, they they, they they lost. But but I can't really feel the the, the uh, um, excitement. You know, yeah. for the season. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, all the way to, it's, it's a great town. You know, the fan base is great. And and you know, this is this is an exciting group, a, a, a hungry group. And you know, everybody's fired up for uh, 2016. And uh, you know, that the main thing that, that I felt when I when I got hired when I. My first couple of weeks is really the excitement of uh, of everybody here. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm proud of you, man. I'm 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 glad you have uh, you know relocated, new location. You're back with Marcel. I uh, wish nothing but the best for for you and and for the Ottawa Red Blacks uh, program. Go ahead and tell the people where they can find you on Twitter and social media, JM. Yes, uh, they can. Uh, you can add me on uh, on, on uh, Twitter. My Twitter name is uh, JM Edme. Um, you can get and follow the Ottawa Red Blacks and the CFL, and 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 please uh, to everybody that's uh, listening. You know, uh, CFL is a great league, and uh, you guys so, should uh, follow us and watch some games, or even come up to Canada and watch some games. Hey, thanks, JM. I'm a, I'm gonna come up this year, man. I got I'm gonna come up. I'm gonna stay a week. I'm gonna try and go to a Montreal game, and then come on out to Ottawa and check you guys out because I had a good time hanging out in Ottawa after the games. I'm not even gonna lie. I, I think there's a couple there's a couple future Miss Londons walking around Ottawa. They're so fine. Oh. <laughs> you stay out of yeah, trouble. No, it's, a, it's a nice town. It's a nice town. Yeah, man. Hey, thanks, JM, for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, take it easy, bro. You all were just educated. You just heard it from a uh, player personnel coordinator in the CFL. He's been a long term, long time scout for the Montreal Alouettes. He was a sp- uh, co special teams coach with the Montreal Alouettes. You guys are hearing what the player, what the scouts and the player personnel people and the coaches are thinking when it comes to CFL draft and the NFL offseason. Now, I'm sorry I had to cut this one short. Like I said, LA traffic is a doozy. But. I really hope you all learn something. I want to thank you for watching the football after show here at AfterBuzz TV. Make sure you follow AfterBuzz at AfterBuzz TV. Watch the shows. We have some amazing hosts here. And once again, I'm the cultured athlete, Brandon London, at cultured athlete on Twitter, Snap, IG. I keep it universal. Thanks for watching again. And I'll see you all either Tuesday, 5 p.m. or Thursday, 5 p.m. You got to follow me to find out. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.